So let's explore the explanatory response and observational studies versus design experiments one last time. These are really tricky concepts to get your mind wrapped around. So the article, Student Drug Testing Does Not Cause Reduced Drug Use, reported results from a stu study of students in 497 high schools and 225 middle schools nationwide. Um, this would be in the U.S. Each student in the study filled out an anonymous questionnaire. One question asked whether the student used drugs. The study found that the drug use was similar in schools that tested for drugs and in schools that did not test for drugs. So results are shown in the table. So does that school have drug testing? Right? Yes or no? So they separated the schools out. And then what's the drug use? So the drug use is yes in students that are in schools that did have drug testings. 37% of the students said, yes, I do use drugs in the schools that had drug testing. And then 36% said yes in the schools that did not have drug testing. Now you can see there's a much larger group of schools that did not have drug testing. There's 17,437 students are in schools that do not have drug testing, whereas only 5,653 are in schools that do have drug testing. Just something to note. All right, so now what are we trying to figure out? What's the response variable we're interested in? So what we're, what we're looking at is, do, is there drug use in this school, right? So what's the drug use level, yes or no? Drug use, right? Now, what are we using to figure out, what do we want to see is explaining that? So we're interested in whether the students are using drugs or not, so that's our response variable. What's the one other thing we're measuring? Well, we're measuring whether their schools do drug testing or not. So that's the explanatory variable. So the drug testing in schools. So you can imagine that school administrators say, we're going to have drug testing in our schools. We're not going to allow drugs in our schools, so we're going to have drug testing. That should lower our drug use rate. And what you can see is that perhaps it doesn't really have any effect at all because the percentages are actually very similar. Now, what was the likely population and what was the sample? Me personally, I always find it easier to figure out the sample first and then work backwards from there. So if you look at the study up here, they talk about um, they polled students in 497 high schools and 225 middle schools nationwide. So that is your sample right there. Right? So our sample is that group. So how many were there? That's the sample size. Now the symbol for sample size is a little lowercase n, as in Nancy. So n, which is 5653 plus 17437, which means our sample size was 23,090 students total. 5,653 from the one group, 17,437 from the other group. Now, if this is our sample, these middle and high school students, what's our population? What's well, likely all middle and high school students in the U.S., right? That is a sample of all the students in the U.S. in those two groups, middle and high school students. All right, now would this be an observational study or a designed experiment? Oh, definitely an observational study, for sure, because the researchers did not randomly place students into their schools, right, into schools that um, use drug testing or not. Since the students are not randomly placed into the schools, this is definitely observational. Instead, they were just asked who were our, um, students who were already at those schools with and without drug testing about their drug use. at those schools about their drug use. All right, so that's observational. And that creates a problem for us because we're not going to be able to make a claim that drug testing does not cause reduced drug use, which was what the title of the article was. So they said drug testing right, does not cause lower drug use. So here's the drug testing. That's not lower. That's actually 1% higher, but let's get real. It's basically the same number, right? Whether your school had drug testing or not, the same percentage of students were going to use drugs or had used drugs. All right, but they can't make a claim about the causing, and that's the real problem. If they said drug testing does not seem to have an effect, that would be one thing. That would be better. 
but that's because there are some lurking variables here, some big ones, that we can't avoid and extricate from this situation. Okay, so let's write all that up. Because this is an observational study, it would be inappropriate to state that drug testing causes redu reduced drug use. Um, remember, observational studies can never make causal claims. cause, effect, claims. That's just my little note to you. So I'll embold that. That's not really part of the response, but it's a little note for yourself to have somewhere. So um, this is because of lurking variables, not confounding variables, because confounding variables may be accounted for in the study, but the confounding that is caused by lurking variables. So lurking variables that might affect the situation, such as, and there are so many in this particular example, um, I just went with whether the district was urban or rural or suburban, um, the poverty level of the district, the policing of the drugs in the district, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, there are scads of things that you could go with. Um, the education level of the parents in the district, the uh, median income in the district, the which is poverty level, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it would be more correct to say that student drug testing does not appear to correspond to reduced drug use. But of course, they don't want to write that in some kind of article because it sounds like you don't really know what you're talking about. And that's not entirely true. There is something going on here. It's not to say that an observational study doesn't have value, but it can't make a cause-effect relationship claim. Right. Again, it's still really important to, to study these things because there are a lot of things we cannot study with experiments because they'd be unethical. Um, but nevertheless, you still want to be careful about what kind of claims you make after an observational study. In this case, you can only claim some kind of correspondence or correlation, say, um, does not appear to correlate to reduced drug use. That's what you can make a claim about. But you can't talk about cause effect unless you have an experiment, and quite frankly, not even then, because a lot of experiments aren't done poorly. And if the experiment's done poorly, then you can't make a cause effect claim then either. So you have to, if to make a cause effect claim is a really special thing that you only get to do with a very, very well designed experiment that's. Um, really well done, possibly double blind, which we'll talk about more in section 1.6. That's, that's what you can do. And if you don't have that very special standard, then you really should not be making cause-effect claims. You can only talk about relationships or correlation or correspondence, that kind of thing. It's fuzzier language, but that's because it's you're getting at some very messy ideas that you can't really do an experiment on for whatever reason.